Money. We're on money now. Yay, money. Okay, how much money do you need? None. You don't need none. Everything's given to you. You get everything that you need to build the robot. It's all there for you. Okay. So you get the you get the return kit, which has got I think it's like eight or nine hundred dollars worth of stuff in it. We you bought it the first year or the second year, and it was I think nine hundred twenty-five dollars. But you got to give that back. Well, I, now I talked to Stephanie about that. We were talking about something, so about giving every team you go after you've been there for yeah. a while. Here's yeah. your kit. Just yeah. keep it. Until you decide to quit, then please get, get it back. back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then you would be responsible if you broke something for replacing it. But you, you know. have to replace it anyway. Yeah, you break it. Well, it depends because now our motors, we've had them for four years, and they were the bushings in there. They were wobbly, and our wheels were falling off. So we went. We asked uh, Greg to get us some more and get us some more motors. Kind of the same thing. With, we had a problem yeah. with the Vex, but it was messed up, so we were able to get that. So that's not really 100% true. You are going to need a little bit of money. Okay? And it depends on what you've got going for you already. So um, first, if you want to do more than just build the robot and the engineering notebook, you're going to need to get the material for the trade show booth. You're going to need to get uh, your team might want to make t-shirts because there's a competition for that. Uh, t-shirts. You might want to do uh, whatever else, printing, make banners. Uh, they think of all kinds of things to do. They love to spend money on each other. Um, and that's, now that is one place where I, I, yeah. Yeah, I step yeah. in. Because they would say, ooh, we need all these cool things from Royal Traders. And I said, well, how much is that going to be? And they said, oh, I don't know, about $3,000. <laughs> no, we don't have that much money to begin with. Good Lord. So anyway, so you, you have to kind of, so we learned then to give each a budget you have this much money to spend and then they will spend absolutely every single yeah. thing and so, this is an area your parents can help in yes yes because um you know i have an email accounts or i have a contact group i guess for my team but then i also have uh for my parents and so we build the field we've built the field ever since the first year to practice on it and uh, the first year we just paid for it. That was it. Cause I just didn't know what else to do. Second year, I think I kind of did the same thing. <laughs> but last year, um, I sent out an email and said, "We need this much lumber. We need this much PVC. Blah 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 blah." Before I knew it, and I mean, within a couple of hours, I had every bit of PVC at my door. Every bit of it. Now that parent had some. But also, they talked to other people who had some, and then he just went out and bought some. That was yeah. his kind of donation. Mm -hmm. And then, same thing happened with the lumber, right there at my door. So this year, we didn't really have to spend that much on building the field. Um, you know, same thing happened, we wanted a rug to practice on it. And I sent out an email and said, we're in need of a rug. Um, anybody have any connections? 30, 45 minutes later, there's this huge piece of rug the size of a fourth of the entire field at my door. So don't underestimate those parents. And listen, right. the parents that did this, I would have never said, hey, I need you to do this, or I need you, because I just didn't, I wouldn't have made those connections. Mm -hmm. So um, just send them out. I think that's a great, you know, keep your parents involved. My parents also help with other things. Uh, like when we work, they bring food. And we have food every single day we work. I have a meal ready for them. Because my kids are extremely involved with everything. So they're leaving football practice and they're coming to work for me. Or they're leaving band practice or whatever and they're coming to work for me. So we do meals. How and many do they? Because we had meals our first year and then last year it was just so overwhelming. I was like, we just decided to do it once a week, have a meal. Because okay. it was just so, how many we practice you serve um, and, oh gosh and the parents we practiced three days a week yeah and um last year i had 36 on the team and every single day was covered wow so okay. i said again i sent out an email and say these are the days we're working we need some parents to sign up for for meals and i think i've noticed no i don't think i know that i have noticed that that has helped bring the team together i think Absolutely. anytime food is involved yeah. <laughs> it brings people together yeah. and i take it back there were maybe tw maybe twice Two times we ordered pizza, 
And one time, I think one of the parents picked up the bill. Okay. Um, and that was, we didn't always have 36 students at the work days because that's another thing too, and I'm probably jumping ahead here. You don't have to have all of your team there every single time. You might can focus on one thing or put 10 in one room and 10 in another room working on marketing or whatever the case may be. You don't have to have all of them there every single time. And um, my first year, I tried to have every single student there every single time we worked. And lots of times, they didn't have anything to work on, you know? So, um, but on average, we had at least 20 kids every night we worked. Every night we worked, we had at least 20 kids. And, um, and so, I don't know, the parents, I let them know up front what we were doing. Now, this year, I'll actually send that out before kickoff and say, we're coming up, you know, up to kickoff. And, uh, we need to start making this calendar. What so, hours do you work on those three days? Um, we, we work um, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 5.30 until. We've been 8.30. We've actually left campus at 10 at night. We do the same thing. That's pretty so, good. Um, that, that's seldom because I don't want to get the kids in trouble. Um, or I don't want to get in trouble. How about that? But, I mean, there have been a couple times where parents have been saying, are you still working on that robot? <laughs> you, know, you need to come home. It's 10 o'clock. But uh, most of the time we work about 5.30 to 8.30, most times. So We would, uh, food-wise, the first two or three years we did like that. We, we got food and people would bring cookies or something like that. We didn't have meal meals. We just had cookies or snacks mm -hmm. or whatever. And we also, what we found out this year, was that the, well, the lunchroom ladies came to me and said, hey, you got an after-school program. Um, we can provide snacks to an after-school program. All you got to do is keep up with how many kids eat every day. Well, we can do that. So, so we went to that. That's good. The lunchroom ladies awesome. would provide them with uh, uh, whatever. Sometimes it was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and fruit. Oh, and then sometimes it was a some sort of snack thing and fruit. But we didn't stay that late. Our, we work from you work right after school. school until 5, 36 o'clock. Uh, and the reason for that is we couldn't stay very late mm -hmm. because the alarm comes on and Mr. Hammond wouldn't give me the code for the alarm. So, I <laughs> um, so now the very last, last year he gave it to me so I'd go in and out of the school on Saturdays. Sometimes I had to work on Saturday. But um, when it got 6 o'clock, we had to be gone. So we, now we could stay outside. The marketing people had the lead. We could stay outside. I wanted to just couldn't go to the bathroom. And so you have to time how long you can actually stay. <laughs> so, um, so now we work four days a week. We work Monday through Thursday. We took off Friday. Because that's a religious, religious holiday. Yeah. So, um, so we, when we got all our work done, and we would occasionally stick in a Saturday, especially if we got at close end. to mm -hmm. at the end, and we're, we're we need to pick up the pace a little bit. We need to do something. We work on a Saturday, and sometimes we stay until six thirty, seven o'clock if we really had to get something done. So, um, but for money wise, uh, let's see tools. You're gonna need you're gonna need some tools. Um, we started out. I ended up with a $500 grant um, from Roger Bedford. I didn't know I could ask for more, but that's all I asked for. So when we got $500, and I bought a battery-powered kit of tools, and it was a, had a drill and a jigsaw, and I don't know, there's some other things that we never used, a flashlight. We never used a flashlight. Well, they did. They liked to shine at each other. Um, you needed the flashlight this past time. Set in a booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's dark and cold. Yeah. Uh, we, um, but that's what we started with. Now, over the years, we have accumulated more tools. We have people donate tools to us. Um, and then I went, you know, we got the school to build us a storage facility, which we used as a, as a lab. Um, not supposed to be, but we used it that way anyway. And we, we had a band saw and a drill press out there, which if you can get access to a drill press, it helps a lot. Um, and then we got a little bit more money, a little bit more time went by, and we ended up with a CNC machine. We bought a kit, it was like $1,500. Um, and we had we got an old computer, used it, had some kids who knew how to, well, had some kids who thought they knew how to operate. And it sat there for about a year because nobody really could get it going. I got a guy to come in um, who works at ULA, his daughter's on the team, and luckily, 
uh, oh, he came in and said, what's that? And I said, that's our CNC machine. We don't know how to use it. You know anything about it? Yeah, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so he came in, he, he revolutionized the team. You know, we could do all kinds of things with that machine now. Uh, which, by the way, is another thing we're talking about, purchasing a little CNC machine that can go here mm -hmm. and that teams can schedule time to come in and use, which I think that would be, awesome. be an awesome thing. And we have Alan Thornton. So. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So uh, the next thing on the list when I was about to leave, uh, well, I didn't even know I was leaving, but I was on the getting a milling machine so we could do a little more than we can with the CNC. Um, and we were getting a, a vacuum machine that we could use for um, carbon fiber. We were going to make carbon fiber parts. We also had a 3D printer, got a 3D printer. So we could print out parts, put them on the vacuum machine, cover it with the carbon fiber and make parts for, well, not necessarily for best, but for ro rocketry would be an awesome thing. That's where we're, we were headed with that. The milling machine was more for, we wanted to get into the great moon buggy race, which is called something else mm -hmm. now. But we want to do that as well. Um, but this whole thing, Paris and stuff got away. Okay, so fundraising. How do you get some money in? Because um, if you're gonna, if you need money, you gotta get money. The first thing I want to tell you is that there are some rules about my public schools. Anyway, there's rules about my, I don't know about y'all. Y'all have y'all do your own thing. I don't know how you do it. But uh, public schools, you have. I had one account, which was a, a public account, or yeah, it was a public account, and I just stuck all the money in there. But I found that I had some problems when I needed to get something. Like if you want to buy a computer, you had to go through Dell, and you could only buy through Dell. And, or you could buy through Apple, but that was the cheaper one, and that's the only way you could do it. So I found a way around that, by the way, if you ever need to know. And you have to go, go around it. You go on Tiger Direct, you buy a computer kit, a bare bones kit, and you have the kids put it together. And since you've got the road computer, no sense in throwing it away, we're going to use it. So we bought several of those and put them together, and we have a computer lab. Or I think I've spent about $800 and had four or five computers in there. Now they all ran Linux because we couldn't afford to buy Windows for it, but we had Linux on them. We had operating systems they could search, they could do all kinds of things on them. And that's about how much I would have spent if I just get one computer. So I got four for the price of one. And we had some people come by who knew what they were doing. I mean, I just didn't say, hey, kids, go build a computer. We had some people come in who did that for a living and they didn't just build it for them, they showed them on one helped them with the next two, and then they built one themselves. So you gotta go. So they did a good job. Um, ask your school for money. You guys like what you do. Um, but you can ask your school for some money. I, I couldn't, my school wouldn't give me I'm anything. Not, they gave us nothing. Um, <laughs> That's did, the system, too. Yeah, they gave us, now they did build us the robo shed. Um, and that was nice of them. Okay. But we had, they put the shell there, and anything inside we had to purchase and do ourselves. Um, the, uh, you can get some donations. Now, we did that. We went to uh, Bedford and all our center. Now you go to Studs because he's the one now. Um, you could go to uh, your representatives and they all are willing to give some money, especially at election time. Now, I have heard recently they changed their policy for giving money. Not to rustle those out here because no, 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 no. That's on video too. <laughs> <laughs> Grants and things because my second and third year we got donations and I, I just heard that they changed that strategy and that application process. So if, if whatever you've done in the past, there's a possibility that it may need to be changed if you've contacted either either of them. So right. I contacted Lynn Greer and and uh, Tammy Irons, and they were very gracious. Yeah. But um, I, do, I did hear recently that that's changed. When you get money in for the public school people, you need to know where it goes, mm -hmm. because certain money can't go in other Like it accounts. can't be used for transportation. If you get money from county commission, is that the right? I don't know, I use money for whatever. That could I never be, got yelled at. So that couldn't be used for transportation, so I had to watch that. So definitely look. Um, one of the grants I got one year, this was for my classroom, one of the grants I got one time from Walmart, there was like one thing it couldn't be used for or something. Yeah. So most of the ones I get though, I'm 
So just Free watch where you put your money, that sort of thing. Um, selling ads, we sold ad space everywhere. On our t-shirt, in our booth, on our robot, um, on our banners, we sold that stuff. And the, the longer you're in the competition, and the more, the higher up you go, like, uh, we could sell ourselves. Like, we've been to South Best four times, and we would talk about, our marketing group came up with, you know, at our competition in Northwest, there's about 2,000 people come through that will see your advertising. We go to South's Best, and there are five to 10,000 people there that will see your advertising. So they were selling themselves based on what they had done. So that's a that's a plus. Okay. Um, in the first year we couldn't do that. We just said, please give us some money. If you like us, we're nice. Okay. Um, we had some general fundraisers. Um, we would, well, the ad sales was our number one, that's mostly what we did. And we always did it in the spring, like right about now, I would do, I started mine, last of April, first of May, selling ads, because nobody else is doing it right now. If you wait till fall, football, basketball, cheerleaders, volleyball, they're all some stuff, excuse me, band, they're all trying to get money. We wait to the end of the year, we got it, and then we had money to start with. So, well, and two, if you wait till the, your season, that's what we've run into the last few years. We were so busy with the first three weeks trying to yeah. go out and get sponsorship and raise money that that was taking up our time, and we couldn't focus on other stuff. So, right. And there's yeah. not a lot of time this year with yeah. the competition no. or the kickoff being at the end of August. Yeah, yeah. because we're, I don't know when school starts. We have less than a month of school yeah. before kickoff. Yeah. Um, grants we talked about, there's several of them. Um, I wrote the one for our senator. Uh, our school system has a foundation. I wrote a grant to the foundation. I wrote one to the um, Lowe's has a grant. We wrote that, we got $5,000 out of them one year. Um, that was the year we built our shed and we ended up, we needed tools and wood and all kinds. We had to, we had to run electricity in there. So we, we had a lot of work to do inside. We needed some money. So anyway, um, where else did we get money? We got money from all kinds of places. Lots of different Google areas. Google that. You can find mm -hmm. STEM grants. Yeah, yeah, STEM Definitely grants. Google it. You can find stuff. Um, Air Force gave us gives us two hundred fifty dollars about every year because nobody over here asks for it. So I'm um, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now your stuff, you have to word it in such a way yeah. that it has to do the Air Force. But now we also launched rockets. You know, my sixth graders launch rockets. So part of that money would go to that, and part of it, it would just all go into the robotics fund. And then, if there was not enough money for the buy all the rockets, robotics team would throw in some. And some years there was enough money with the grant and some left over, so we just kept it going. Uh, number one thing I heard somebody say one time: How much do you charge the kids? And you don't charge them anything. My goal was always to have a child not have to pay a penny to do anything with the team. Okay, I don't charge when we went to South Bus. I don't charge them to get on the bus. I don't charge them for a hotel room. I, now they have to pay for their own food because yeah. I can't buy food out of the money. So those things were free if they wanted it. Okay. Now we also said you know, if your parents are going, and they don't have to, but if they are going, I want you to stay with your parent, okay? and that way you help the robotics team save a little bit of money that way. But they don't have to, and I would have to buy usually uh, eight to ten rooms for my team. I had. 40 to 50 kids on the team. And so we'd have to buy about eight rooms and that would count you know, me a room and uh, we, our chaperone, uh, we'd have police protection. We'd have to take a cop with us all the time. Um, and then um, the rest of it was the kids' rooms. Bus driver. So yeah, bus driver. I've been the bus driver. Don't forget that we didn't have to school bus. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 We have other requirements. So. All right, anyway. So don't, don't charge them anything. And then best that you can come out and not charge them anything, do that. Uh, how much time? How much time do you have? <laughs> yeah. um, best last 42 days. Okay. Now, I spent pre-competition, we would have a meeting, depends on how long a time we had, uh, we'd have a meeting about the beginning of school, and then we would try to meet about once a week until we got up to about two or three weeks before the competition, then we meet twice a week. And then that week of the competition, of the kickoff, we'd come just about every day. 
Uh, and the reason for that is we start doing some team building things. We start in with um, what we get our fundraising. Anybody who didn't finish up their fundraising at the end of the year, you need to get that done now before the season starts. Um, also, we would do things like, um, there's some things you can take care of beforehand, like uh, your booth. You can start figuring out what we want the booth to sort of be. Okay? Your presentation, there's some parts that are the same every year, and so okay. you can get that sort of stuff done. Um, you, can get, you can get a lot of stuff done that you won't have to go, oh no, we forgot about that. What about the notebook? The notebook, you really, you can, you can sort of outline it, because okay. uh, once you do one notebook, you know, okay, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. And there are some things in the notebook that's going to be the same year after year after year. Right. So you can, yeah, you can just stick that stuff in. Uh, that's also when we had our safety meeting. Uh, we'd have our safety meeting preseason, take pictures, had a nurse come by this year. Lady made us a, we used to have a little first aid kit like you buy in Walmart. She said, that ain't work. So she said, I'll get you some stuff. I said, I'll pay for it. No. Nope. I got it, don't worry about it. So she went, she came back with one of the big totes like this. She said, this is your first aid kit. And then she sat down with the kids and she showed them what to do. And somebody chops off a finger, here's what you do. And somebody, somebody loses the tooth, here's what you do. So if anything you could think of that could happen, she came up with how to, how to handle that. And we took pictures, we were supposed to video it, but the kid's uh, phone ran out of memory and we needed the video of it. So, have pictures of it, put that in our engineering notebook. It is important to to have a contract and their or a safety contract, in my opinion. And then on the back of this, we had a tool use safety contract. Mm -hmm. So I made the parents, and I think I got this off the CD that you get at at kickoff, um, and it's online too at bestink.org. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Parent had to sign it, the child had to sign it, date it, and all of that. And this is what that parent said it's okay for this child to use. And this child was everything. And I did get some stuff back that said, like, this cannot be used by my child. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't remember examples, but, I mean, even hand scissors is on here. So, <laughs> thought about wiping yeah. that out. I didn't want to yeah. But, anyway. Uh, my safety rule was, if you're not in high school, you can't cut anything. Um, <laughs> okay. Now they can use a drill. Because yeah. we had some younger ones that were like, well, yeah, we said no. You well, there's, there's, all well ways of, there's always, you know, a corollary to the rule. There's the Andrew corollary. Andrew was a sixth grader who has been building houses since he was eight, okay? And he knew more about using the tool than I did. And so, you know, his dad came and said, oh, he knows how to use it. He's not going to cut himself. So I would watch and he would cut and stuff. Because he was the only one on the team who knew how to cut something besides me. So, so at that time, he became the first to cut. Now, he's the CEO this year, by the way. Andrew did a good job. Um, um, yeah, we talked about times where I talked about that. Uh, the big thing is make your team comfortable. I try not to make it so that a kid just can't be there. I just can't. And there were a couple times where we kind of, you have to kind of make a decision, especially with high school kids. You know, a kid wanted to play football and be on the robotics team. And I said, well, you can be part of the robotics team and come when you can on like the Saturdays and stuff, but I know there's no way that you're going to be able to be here. And so he did, and then he, he broke his knee or something, and he ended up, he was there all the time then. He couldn't, <laughs> couldn't go to football anymore, so he came all the time. He, he had a really, he had a really great, uh, impact on the team too. So he's now at Auburn uh, working on his engineering degree. So he was more at one of us than that. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Here we go. Oh, I was gonna say let me back up. Back up. Okay. After Best is done, and this year that'll be October or so, um, we did other things. And we started with TARC, the Team America Rocketry Challenge. That was our first thing to add in to do, um, and that it's paid off. <laughs> but that's the one where they, they're going to France. Now, park, it's $125 a team. You can have as many teams as you want. You have up to 10 kids on your team. They build a rocket. It goes has to go a certain altitude. It has to sit in the air a certain amount of time, and it has to um, take an egg with it, and the egg has to return on broken. And uh, that's, we work on that. Um, past 
several years, we haven't been able to do a whole lot because we've been to South Fest, and it starts about September and runs through March. So what these kids did to me was phenomenal because they didn't start until January. And they went from January to March. They built that rock. I, I know that the... And you've done some of the aquatic robotics too, haven't you? We did. I, I wrote a grant to Sea Perch. Uh, Seaperch.org. You go on Sea Perch and you can get a grant to get so many of their robots and a toolkit. And um, I had my sixth graders build them one year. They, we were studying oceans, part of our course study. And they built these underwater robots and we had, we had a whole sixth grade thing. The math teacher was doing something, the English teacher was doing something. Um, uh, social studies was talking about World War II at the time and happened to have submarines in there, so that was pretty good too. So we did all kind of interrelated stuff. It was really cool. Um, Cross-curricular, that's the word I was looking for. Um, that, was, that was a good one. Um, matter of fact, I want to, and Dr. Gardner and I are talking about trying to have a competition for that coming up. So anybody that comes, if you're going to come to the, to the workshop, do the summer. Um, well, you'll get one. Build it. Just one day. Yeah, just one day. You get the robot, and then you learn how to get the kit, and then your kids can build one, and then y'all can go to the competition. We'll have a competition at UNA, and we'll send somebody to the national competition. Starkville Home Educators take part in Seaperch. Oh, cool. They were at um, South Southwest. Oh, were they? Mm -hmm. That's when we went. I met them, mm -hmm. and I went to their website. And they do the yeah. uh, Seaperch. Seaperch is around more places than you think. Um, but it's not right here in our little area. Too. There's nobody that does it. On the map, we're the only Brussels mm -hmm. in the only place. Um, another one we did was 1080 Student Racing, which is a uh, it's NASCAR and the Army. That works. But anyway, um, you can write to them and get a grant, and they will send you three uh, one tenth scale NASCAR radio controlled cars. And you engineer that, they send you a whole curriculum. The really cool yes. thing. Um, and then you can go to, uh, they have races all the time. They also do stuff you don't have to go to. You can do it at your school and just send them your scores. And then they have a national championship too. Um, somewhere, I don't remember what. Last year it was in Charlotte. That's what it was. Um, and what else have we done? We did some, oh, we, I've always wanted to do the Great Moon Buggy Race, <laughs> but we've never They're engineered not. that, never got to that part. Y'all do anything? What do y'all do? Y'all do anything? We do a lot of outreach, actually. Outreach. We do a lot of outreach. We uh, partnered with the Children's Museum and built a robotic display for them that was functional, and the kids designed it, uh, built it, installed it, and everything. We do outreach at local libraries, local schools, um, and don't you don't have to do anything. That's just, I mean, I think that's the two of us just trying to. Yeah. keep the interest going and keep the kids my first year i did nothing extra i mean like i just after it was all over i just went oh, oh okay and that's it you did what i survived yeah i made it i made it but then the second year it was the kids coming to me saying uh, they wanted to do a little bit more but they just didn't know what areas and then kind of things just fell in my lap actually because i didn't go out looking for stuff like the museum it kind of came to us and um, some other things have opened up here recently, so um, we don't do anything else. Of course, we have a class for robotics at Brooks. We have um, six, uh, six period is our time to have robotics, and it's just one semester. And so I don't see them as much second semester. It would almost be difficult for me to get them together to do stuff like that because I have young kids, and you know, it's all I can do to manage that first semester and and keep my sanity with my kids being involved and they're six and four and they come to everything that's going on so i take a break in the spring honestly the outreach is student-led too um, but uh if you can get a class talk to your counselors now um i guess that's just these two right if you can you already you already have a class we gordon have they talked to you about whether or not you're going to be able to have a class period well, we have a small 30-minute window in the afternoon, what we call an activity period. Well, that's good enough to arrange, get it together for what you're going to do that afternoon or that evening. And, uh, usually after uh, robotics, I spend the next couple of uh, nine weeks getting ready for the uh, 
Science Olympiad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the we guy from Winfield is into does love that. I don't know if you try to remember where Meek is in relationship to Winfield, but it's down in that general vicinity anywhere, isn't it? Brian. It's closer than here anyway. Yeah. Uh, not really. Really? Where is it then? Where's it? Is it Meek in Marion County? Oh, he's in Winston County. It's Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, wrong Devil Springs. He doesn't teach geography. Oh, it's on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've been to Devil Springs. I know where that is. Now, Florida oh. City is very involved with uh, Science Olympiad. Yeah. So, I know that's far away. But um, we, never able, we were never able to have anything during the week, but ever before meeting, we would just meet during the season. Uh -huh. And then that was it. But this year, we're going to have one hour a week at our co-op when we meet on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. we're going to have, we're offering it one hour for any kids, so that's going to be a good time for us to at least work on mm -hmm. some of this. Yeah. But we bounced around the idea of what do we do after the season's over? Well, now that we have the EDR, mm -hmm. and now that we can do different things, we can springboard off of that mm -hmm. each yeah. week. So. That, um, so I want to do a Rocket PD and invite anybody who wants to come to it, so that I think would be a be a good thing to get it. The rocket thing is not too difficult. There's a little bit of money to begin with. You need about five hundred dollars to start to get your get your stuff to begin with, and then the next year's it's not nearly as expensive because you already bought the expensive stuff like software. And there's some software that's free, but that little altimeter is expensive. They require you have to have this one, and so on. Anyway. Um, Maybe you should do the minimum, you might think. I suggest you don't. The minimum yeah. is build the robot, do the engineering notebook. And that's the very minimum. And it's tempting. Yeah, there are teams don't do do that. It. Just don't do it. Do it all. But the, the thing about doing the whole thing is that you get you get a lot more input from other kids. You know, there's not everybody's into building a robot. When I first talked about starting a robotics team, every kid said, I don't know how to build a robot. I said, that's fine. You don't have to. Well, if there was to know how to build a robot, do that. Well, once you don't, you can do this. There's other things. You have artistic people, all kinds of people get involved. So keep keep that in mind that you can involve more than just the kids who want to do robotics. Oops, there you go. Can you skip the t-shirt? Yeah. I guess you could. But um, I wouldn't do that either. That's that's a cool. They get to do whatever they want on that thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, they like it. They like to wear the t-shirt. It also makes them look like a team dance as well. So, would it be okay to do an um, an inner team competition if you've got six or eight kids that want to design a t-shirt and turn them all loose, let them design a t-shirt, and um, and then your team awards, you know, the the winner of that. You, that gets to be the t-shirt for the team? I mean, yeah, it would be yeah. a t-shirt for the team. Do what you want to do, that's your, yeah, that wouldn't be a problem at all. Um, we just, we did it group-wise and said, hey, y'all design a t-shirt, and then I walked away. Because <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. They, they just designed their own. What did y'all do? Yeah, we, uh, the last three years, we've had pretty much one girl that's designed the t-shirt, and then, but she's bounced ideas off of other people, but she was the one who was solely responsible. But nobody else really had a niche for that. Mm -hmm. This year, we have probably three people that would be able to do that. But they're just going to work together. It's a great idea as far as getting the different teams together. Say, you do a t-shirt, you do a t-shirt, you do a t-shirt. And let's just see what we come up with. And, and I wouldn't even let them talk. Like, see what right. each group comes up with individually. And because um, you might pull something from each t-shirt, but I wouldn't spend too much time on it. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't that spend was too one much thing time last year. I felt like we spun our wheels a, a long time on on the t-shirt issue. Um, and That's the way it's been in the past. It's well, almost like a yeah. Well, you have to prioritize with that. When I yeah. see them spinning their wheels, I let them do it for a little while, uh -huh. and then I talk to like the CEO because the way it went is I talked to the CEO, CEO talks to the heads. Now. But anyway, I would, on something like that, I would say, hey, you know, it seems like y'all aren't getting anything done. Mm -hmm. You might want to look at what's going on in the team and in your you know, in your leadership meeting this afternoon, y'all discuss that. And a lot of that stuff would come up. Well. Okay. So 
And then that's when one of the times they start saying, hey, we probably need some sort of schedule when things are done. That'd be a good idea. Mr. Brown, you mm -hmm. suggested that about three years ago. Okay, anyway. They definitely prioritize, I mean, if they get to the point where they just cannot agree on something like a t-shirt, you have to kind of remind them, a t-shirt's important, mm -hmm. but that doesn't carry so, you to the next level. Right. You know, if you're wanting to move on, we need to get this done so we can focus on presentation or we got to focus on booths that's or right. that's how robot. They their, that's how they came up with their, um, their hierarchy, I guess they said, okay, this is worth this many points, this is yeah. worth this many points, this is worth this many points. Let's do these things that are important, like the video. They started this year, they started just sitting there, it take them forever to get the video done. We're trying to practice with the robot. No, we need the robot for the video, we'll take it. Well, they've been gone with it for two hours. No, 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 you can't do that. Yeah. So I said, hey, y'all aren't be able to drive your robot, where is it? Well, they've got it, huh. How many points do you get for the video? And I just left it there, and then they went and took care of it. Yeah. Look at this sheet for a second. The due dates, and um, on Tuesday, October 6th, is when all this stuff's due. Okay? Well, you need to, definitely, you have to have engineering notebook. You have to have team demographics, and you really, you need to have CAD, too. Um, but that's not, not the point. But it's not, it's, yeah, it just helps with the engineering notebook. But all that other stuff, teamware, website, Video now, Spirit and Sportsmanship Bank. You got to do that, or you don't really. You need you don't to. Have to you need, need to. to. Yeah. You need to. Mascot and costume, and there are other things. You know that's not required. Now, my first year, I didn't do any of that. The team didn't do any of that. We did. Um, we did compete for best overall, but we didn't do mascot. We didn't do. Um, I don't think, I don't even think we did, we may have done website. I think we did do website, but we didn't do the other stuff. Um, we really just threw a t-shirt together, which I mean, we pretty much knew going in. I mean, it had like one word written across the front, which was our team name, that, that was it. I mean, we just didn't spend a lot of time on that. We spent time on the other stuff. So if, if you get overwhelmed your first year, or your second or your third, it doesn't matter what year, Realize some of the things that don't matter as much. It's important for team unity, but it doesn't matter as much as the other five components of best. So um, that's would be my advice. Our t-shirt was the last minute, very first year, last minute thing. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who know Russell is black and gold, mm -hmm. our first t-shirt was green, mm -hmm. and it had, a, it had the tiger on the front. That's all, nothing else. And it didn't even have the people on the back. So, all right, how many kids on your team? That's always a oh, question. How many do we need to have? There's no set number for best. I I know that last year Phil Campbell showed up at the competition with three kids. Um, that's probably not enough. No. I think I think ten is probably about your minimum number. If you want to do everything, ten is probably a minimum number. And then up from there, depending upon what you can do. Uh, I kept the team set at about twenty five for a while, and then. This year, since I got, Mr. Keaton was going to come in and help, we went to 50. So we had 50 kids on the team, we had a few quits, so we ended up, when we went to South Southwest, I think we had 43 or 4 on, on the team. So, um, but we went, did, went in with the idea we were going to have 50. Now I talked to, I left before they made decisions who was going to be on the team, and Mark said they went down to about 40, so, because we talked that 50 was oh, too many. Mm -hmm. And because uh, there were a lot of kids just standing around doing nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so with, I think they went back down to 40. So Do not get a high number if you don't have a well-picked team. Yeah. And also, <laughs> what grades are you talking about? Mine, my team was 612. Okay, so, so you do have 40 to 50, 6 through 12 grades. 6 through 12 grades. Okay, cause, and then your team is? <sighs> we have 48 this year, and it is all 912. Okay, oh. see, a lot of schools, you know, are... You know, are just nine out of twelve, mm -hmm. and even one of our students caught uh, the other day that some schools we competed with are junior seniors, and that's it. Right. Um, yeah, there's you know, just, or or maybe not the tenth graders, and that's mm -hmm. it. So ours is six through twelve, and so that's one thing we want them working yeah. on something, but not well, standing around. Right. So what I, what we did is the ones that came in that were sixth graders. They we've only hired one fifth grader before, and that's because I thought it was a sixth grader. <laughs> But, and that's Charlie, Charlie, if you've been here, you know Charlie. So anyway, so what we did was um, the sixth graders generally 
are observing, okay. yeah. especially on R and D. Now, on the other team, they, they did stuff, but on R and D, they observed. They were a cleanup crew because okay. everybody has. They said everybody has to earn their keep, so they were the floor sweepers, the putter awayers, and all that kind of stuff. That helped them also learn the tools, where, where they, they go, that sort of thing. So Excellent. it's pretty good. Um, I was going to say something about oh. the number. Hold on. Um, my first year I had 25 and and I had to handpick on my first year because I literally had no time I just had to I was pretty much given a list of I think it was about 60 kids and I was told pick how many ever you want out of this 60 kids and so I did try to have a well-rounded group I tried to have people who I thought were just academically strong people who could write well people who could do math people who I felt could build and people who just were enjoyable to be around because those are going to be the people that help you know encourage other teams and things like that they're just nice to be around you know mm -hmm. so um i had 25 and then i did take on about seven or eight so um that year and then the second and third year we hovered around 30 i think it was like 32 36 or something like that last year we had 36. this year we have 48 i do not ever encourage that for a new team ever mm -hmm. um but we do applications and we had over 80 people apply. Mm. And so yeah. when you have 80 people and you're looking at those 80 people and you can only easily mark off five or six, now, I don't even decide who's on the team. My leadership does. I have a committee that decides. We have the leadership of the team. We have um, teachers in the school that stay anonymous. And I even involved a community member this year. And so we had a panel and they all went through applications. And so we did online applications this year, but uh, we just couldn't get it, we couldn't get it below 48. We just couldn't. So uh, it's going to take a lot from uh, the management perspective to get that organized. Um, and we will have a lot of people who just kind of sit and watch and learn, not just sit and watch, but they learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you, my first year out of those 25 kids, really only 12 did anything that was successful um, to the team and that meant there were a lot of problems that first year there were a lot of kids sitting in the corner thinking you know they thought that they couldn't do anything they weren't able to do it. I mean all kinds of stuff and I remember the, the night before uh, we were going to competition one of them said something pretty ugly about how we don't even have a chance you know and that was within our team you know because I'm just saying people that are idle and don't have anything to do they're going to be poisoned so just don't and that's the way it is for So how do you handle that? Because that's, you know, when, when she said she was offering this management class, that's where my brain went to. Right. Managing mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. You know, managing. The negaholics. Yeah. I also coined about the uh, state meeting last week. Oh. Negaholics, yeah. Those are people who write off you let your, your, yeah. your CEOs and your head handle that? Or you they just take care of it themselves? And how? It always depends on what the problem is. Sometimes there's okay. a problem you're going to have to address. Okay. But overall, if it's if it's a a problem like a negative student or something like that, and another child is not being negatively affected by it, like a bully situation or something like that, which I've never had that. Okay. That's where I would have to step in. But if it's something that leadership can take care of, I'll let them take care of it. If it doesn't work, then I have to take care of it. Um, we do relieve people of their position on the team if need be. So we've done that, and and you have to have guidelines for that. You can't just say you're fired. Yeah, we're done. You do have <laughs> job descriptions. And yes. And who made those up? Uh, well, the kids made them up, and I did help a little bit with that, mainly the students, because they, you know, would research companies and look at what job descriptions were of companies. And also, it seems like there's something on one of the CDs that we get or something on bestink.org. If you go and look around, there's a lot of stuff no, there. It seems like there was something about, I don't know, maybe like a website or something. So, Is your hierarchy the way you're kind of set up? Is it now like it was when you first did no. it? No. Our okay. hierarchy has totally changed. At the beginning, it was like um, everybody's on the team. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you mind just kind of walking us? Because that's kind of where we are. We're in the middle of. Have our have our we're in the middle of. We everybody's on the team. We're just a team. Right. Yay! To now we got to say, okay, we so, need some clear cut. Right. So and so is responsible for this. So here's what what I did. You can't tell him what to do. We started out that way, and we the first, the second, third year or so, we did like she did. We had applications. 
And I went through and I, I hired people and said, you're on team, you're on team, you're on team. Then the next year or so, well, take that back. Um, I would also appoint the leadership. I would say, you are the CEO, and you are the head of this, and you're the head of this, you're the head of this, you're the head of this. No, wait, don't, don't write that down, because that's bad. Right. Because, yeah. <laughs> I, I, this I did that because at the, at the very beginning, when, um, I wanted it to be, I was, I was, I was being fair-ish mm -hmm. about it, okay, because I knew that this person was a leader, and this person was a leader. Um, but uh, I didn't hire a person for a CEO one time who thought she was going to be the CEO, but I didn't hire a CEO because for several different reasons. One, she was doing everything. I mean, she was the band, mm -hmm. the drum major, she was here, she was this, she was this, she was this. She was never there anyway, really, when she was, she was in charge of one part of the team. She really wasn't there much. She'd come in every once in a while and say, hey, do this, and then she'd leave. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, she can't really be a good CEO, so I hired somebody else. That made a lot of people angry. Mm -hmm. So this year, what they did, and this took me six years to figure it out. Uh, this year, what we did um, is I came, we had application for leadership. If you wanted to be a leader, you had to apply for it. Now, still, I, well, I did this year. Mark and Joseph sat down with the application for leadership. They interviewed the people. They had a list of questions, just like if you go to an interview, here's, here's our question, we're gonna ask everybody the same questions. They took that and then they made a decision on it. Now, only one person applied for CEO, only one person applied for this. I think two mm -hmm. people applied for one thing, but that's about it. Yeah. Then, then we took those kids, and we now we've done this every year, is the leadership then sits down with the applications to be on the team. And what we do every year is we fire everybody off the team. After South Best, nobody's on the team anymore. Okay? Let go. Let everybody let go. And I got I got yelled at a lot layoff. this layoff. year. Yeah. <laughs> well, layoff, yeah. We're done. We're not getting people off. And so I got We don't have work to do right now. We had some stuff going at South Best didn't need to go on and I fired some people off the team. Okay. Mm. Everybody was getting fired off the team anyway. And I told them, you've been removed from the team because you didn't you broke this rule. And you're being removed from the team. And now they were actually it was my leadership team, almost all of them. Uh, I fired them all. But now I told them also, you're welcome to apply for a leadership position. You're welcome to reapply to be on the team. Okay. And so anyway, um, I, I we fired everybody off. Then everybody has to reapply to be back on the team. So they sat down with all these applications, and we ended up with a hundred and something applications to be on the team. And they would go through and look and say, okay, these are the people we want to interview. And they, then they call, send out letters to those people, tell them to come in one or two, I think they had to do it for like three days to interview all the people they wanted to interview. And they had a number that they could meet, you, know, you can hire up to this many people. And that's what they did. They hired the people and I always stayed out of it. Now there were a few times when I would step in and say, okay, there was a kid on the team who had, he had some stuff going on, a um, little bit different. And they wanted to fire him every year. And I said, let's give him another year and see what happens. And he never got any better. So the last time I said, Ms. Brown, can we fire him this year? I said, if whoever you want to hire and fire, you go ahead. And so they fired him. <laughs> um, so you have to handle it that way. As far as discipline goes, they discipline themselves. They came up with a set of rules if you break these rules, then what will happen is your department head will talk to you. And then if that's not fixing it, the department head will go to the CEO, CEO will talk to you. And if that's not fixing it, they will come to me and recommend something. Now, the only person with hiring and fire, or firing power was me. Okay. I'm the only one who fired. They yeah. can't fire some out team, but they can recommend to me. And they have to come with some Which reasons. They can't, yeah, they can't just say, we don't like you anymore, so get rid of them. Um, so, I think that would be a good thing. Now, there were some things we had a fight one time. Two kids got in a fight. Y'all go to the house and never come back. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just one of those things. You can't you know. tolerate stuff like right. that. Right. I mean, and the, you know, the rules, and before we went to South Best, I had a set of rules in writing. Because before we had just had verbal rules, you know, boys and girls don't need to go in each other's, in each other's hotel rooms. You know, y'all need to be in your room at such and so time. 
And it was just verbal, but this year I said, no, we need something written down. So I did, and I had them sign it. They got on the bus, and they, this will happen. Anyway, so what do you get to build the robot out of? Junk, mostly. Uh, some PVC, some plywood, a couple of one-befores. You get some pieces of metal, some pieces of plexiglass, and none of it looks like a robot. It's just a pile of stuff, okay? Uh, you'll see robot kits. When they say you're going to get a kit, and it's not really a kit. It's just a bunch of junk. Now, there's two kits. That's the consumable kit. You use that stuff up. The other kit is a returnable kit. That's where you get motors, servos, and the brain of the robot. That stuff comes too, and you get to use it to build your robot out of. Um, but they have to design the robot using the material they have. They can't use anything that's not in a kit minus a few things that are in the, in the rules. It says there's a few extra things. Coke can. The, oh my God, the coolest thing I ever saw. One year, we did, were you there when we did Six Sigma? No? Okay, so, I hope this, okay. So, Coke can, it's got this curvy thing on it, like this. So, dark, no, that's because we were over there with Captain Decatur's team. Uh, one of the things you could do, you had to, uh, there were golf balls different colors. One of the colors of the golf ball was a bad product, and you had to get rid of that. So you could, you have a three minute round, so you could go, and wait a minute and a half and then figure out which one's the bad one. Well, oh, figure out what's the bad one and throw it away. Oh, I gotta be in front of that. Um, <clears throat> throw the bad one away or not, not have it. Um, but what Dark did is they took a Coke can and they set up a thing you could plug into the field and the field would automatically tell you which one's bad. But your, your robot had to show you which was the bad one. So they had a Coke can and it would swivel like this. And they had programmed they had little slits, and however much of the slit was showing, of the red was showing in there, that's which one was bad. I don't know, the first one was red, the second one was the blue one, third one, and it was, that was the coolest thing ever. So it just turned it the exact amount. Those are some smart kids. Yes. We just, we just waited. <laughs> we just waited until the minute and a half went by. Um, anyway, so you get some of that golf ball, you can put a golf ball in there if you want to, some CDs. They wanted to use CDs for wheels one time. That's yeah, not a good idea. You can um, add the pennies, uh, you know. Um, pennies. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, or you, you can use 24 shoes. pounds of pennies. Yeah. And what I can't think. I mean, it, it's a short list, like 12 things. Yeah, they came up with, uh, we were trying to figure out exactly how many pennies to eat put in that little bucket at the back to make the arm raise and stuff. So they said, well, how much does a penny weigh? So they, they massed a penny. And then somebody looked it up. They found out that some pennies weigh more than others. Mm -hmm. That if they are after 1982, they weigh 2.5 grams. If they're before 1982, they weigh more. It's like 3 grams because they're made of copper. And the ones after 1982 are made of zinc and a copper foil over it. So they, they learned some stuff. Hmm. It's amazing what they learned during yeah. this process mm -hmm. that you don't even, you can't teach it. You can't you teach it and you can't even that. plan for it to happen. Mm -hmm. It just happens. Today, and I'm not going to even know the right terminology, but today I was talking to one of my math, one of the math teachers at school, and we were talking about the engineering notebook. We've lost a lot of our leadership, so um, which we built last year. We mentored our. That's a good advice too mentor the next generation mm -hmm. you know don't let everybody be seniors in leadership and they go and you don't you don't have a base there so we've uh, had kids mentored well anyway so i was talking to him about these kids going to the training and all this kind of stuff and he had taught he had seen another sponsor from another school and they had started talking about our our team and um just needed advice this was his first year and he needed advice and he said look I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, he said, I looked at, he had looked at the engineering notebook before they turned it in. He said, I looked at the engineering notebook and I, because I, they, they were proud of it, they wanted to show it off. He said, but I don't even know, you know, what, what it was. Well, he said, now take it back. I did have a kid come up to me, named the kid. He said he was um, trying to find out an equation for something and he, and I'm going to butcher this, so help me out, but he said he knew that when there was a metal, there was a some kind of coefficient that you could use that was based off what the metal was. It was called a 10-something. I don't even know. I can't even remember now. 
And I just went, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. And he said, um, so he had learned that metals, if they were made of copper, they had a special coefficient. If they were made of uh, lead, they had a special coefficient. Mm -hmm. Well, the student was asking about PVC, and he said, I don't know if PVC has this built-in, you know, uh, coefficient for the product. And it had to do with how much weight that product could take mm -hmm. based off the diameter without mm -hmm. breaking. Mm -hmm. It's called something. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cool. I was listening to the teacher a bit. Like I said, I, biology, I don't even. Yep. And uh, so, this, but that that conversation intrigued the student. He ran home and did a lot of research. So he came back to tell the teacher, yes, PVC and wood have that same uh, concept. You okay. can use it with PVC and you can use it for wood. So he was teaching our nationally board certified teacher. <laughs> <laughs> a few things about a few things about math, so it was pretty cool. And the kids gonna remember that. Of course, the teacher did because he was telling me, and he was proud of the kid. It wasn't no way a bad situation. So you'd just be amazed at what the kids learn. For the engineering notebook slide, there's a whole class on engineering notebooks, yes. and I suggest if you don't know what what it is, you need to go you need to go do that at some point. In time. And you can do it during spring during a training at kickoff. Yeah, I, I went to the I was definitely kickoff. It's been really really good. More importantly, I would send a kid to that one. That's where I would put a kid. Just at. remember that a uh, lot of guidelines on that thing, and it is not something to wait till the end. No, okay. yeah, I mean, it should it should be the story of this whole process mm -hmm. from the beginning to at least the day before it's due. You know, I mean, you can't obviously because it's due on a Tuesday, so the competition's on Saturday. And by the way, because this is something that everybody thinks about later. Whatever you turn in Tuesday with the engineering notebook, it's okay if you keep working on the robot. You may not have a working robot yes. on that Tuesday when you turn in your engineering notebook. And by the way, it does have to be turned in by a certain time. I think it's 5 p.m. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, second year, 4.59. And literally, they came in with the notebook and they said, can you take this? And the person looked at their watch and said, you've got like 10 seconds. I mean, it was literally like 10 seconds. And they won't, they won't I mean, I don't think they'll take it past five. So, but anyway, um, what was I saying? Rule. Oh, you can work on the robot. The kids can work on the robot after that notebook's turned yeah. in because the people that grade the notebook, I mean, yeah, it'd be great if your robot was exactly the way you perceived it in the notebook, but it's okay to work on it after the fact. Like South Best, I think our notebook is due four weeks before the competition, right? It's like so, South Best, ours was, it was, no, it was due like, a week after, a week or two right, after. Right, before you. South Best. I mean, it's due weeks yeah, before. Yeah. Ours Did was turned in. Yeah, yeah. It's it's at. No. No, not at South Best. It has to be. No, you have to have to be mailed in weeks before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I think we had less than two weeks to work on it. Now, this year you'll have more. If you'll have longer time because you got an earlier start. And they say, too, at Auburn that you're, because everybody builds a different robot. You know, you said you know that our kids built a different robot. Your robot doesn't even have to match the. Right. It's it's they're no. looking because those judges they, they judge said they yeah they said they're robot. not even going to ever see your robot. They're, they're looking at the process. <laughs> so my first year we were all stressed out because our notebook mm -hmm. was done new ish done ish mm -hmm. and they wanted to make changes and so you can you can make changes it's okay. Yeah you can make changes. Y'all um, teams have been real successful in a lot of the areas, but with your notebook and as big a teams as you guys have, how do you tackle that project with your team? Google Docs. I mean, it's everybody on the team contributes, but you can't physically have 40 people. That's what we use Google put Docs. one notebook together. But how do you manage that what, or help them What they do is um, the CEO this year sat down and opened up a Google Doc and came up with an outline for the for the notebook, wrote the whole thing, whole outline part because he knew what it had to be like, and they basically pasted some stuff that's yeah. the same every year, right. and then shared it with the leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the the head of R and D's job was to do these parts. These are your parts. You you make sure that, that gets put in there. Marketing these are your parts of the notebook, and whatever this is your part of the notebook. And so everybody had a part of the notebook to do. And then they would meet. Now, they have a leadership team meeting. They try to have one, like, once or twice a week, anyway. And one of the things in that meeting this year that they talked about was 
the notebook. Where are you at on your part of the notebook? Because everybody can pull it up and look and see what you're doing, what you're not doing. Um, the CEO wrote the research paper part um, or assigned it to another kid to write because this year our CEO is not the best writer in the world. So um, he's going to probably assign it to some other kid to write the, that research part. But that's what they did. They used Google Docs and they could share it and then they could collaborate online. So they could be, one kid could be at the school, another kid could be at home, another one could be at the beach. They could work on it anywhere. We just um, used email. I mean, yeah. we had some Google Docs stuff going on, but it got crunch time for mm -hmm. our right. uh, notebook mm -hmm. and they would email back and forth. Right. They divide, we had our head of engineering divided it up and said right. who did, would do what. And I guess we kind of did the old fashioned way because we just would call a meeting and everybody would, that was involved would be at the meeting. Now we had one person who was totally responsible for making sure it got done, but then the notebook. And then we had, we divided stuff up too as well. But anytime the engineers were about to make a big change, they would try to call one of the representatives from the notebook over. And every drawing, every little sketch, you know, they had a place to put that sketch um, to make sure it made its way to notebooking. Um, so there has to be open communication. Right. I, these are great ways too, and then there's just got to be, sometimes there's just got to be face-to-face -face talking, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, programming, don't worry about programming. Mm -hmm. not, not you anyway, because unless you want to take a crash course. Just get a kid who can do it. Get a kid. It. Kid will handle it. It's very, uh, especially if they use Easy C. Easy C is fairly intuitive. So, it's drag and drop. Sure. And where do they get this? Easy C is a software that come will come to you on um, kickoff. You'll get a C. You'll get either you'll get some downloads or, or you'll email. get an email. It's got some uh, links or something. Like that. Yeah, you'll get you'll get some way to get the software on kickoff day. My suggestion is download it that day. Uh, you'll also get SolidWorks that day too. Um, you get the programming. Uh, you, yeah, if you go to the program, you have a kid at the programming thing. You know they'll get it now. Um, you can also buy it. It's like $75 or something like that. Uh, there's a company called Visual Edge. And if you'll tell them that you're a best team and talk to Dan Ward, Dan will work you a deal. Yeah. Um, he's a great individual, wonderful person. He's from Illinois. I was at Iowa in Illinois. Something starts from Illinois. Um, anyway, Indiana. Can you say that again? Dan, Dan Ward at Visual, Visual Edge. Edge. Yeah. Visual Edge. It's all one word. And, uh, Stephanie's got business cards. Tell Stephanie you want a visual edge business card. She'll get you one. That's also a good place if you want to buy a kit too, isn't it? Mm hmm. You want to buy a kit from him? He's, he's got everything. Just tell him, basically, he's got tell a web page. But if you talk to him, tell him that, yeah, tell him you know Stephanie. And he'll go, oh, click. No, he won't do that. No. <laughs> no, no, he's a nice guy. Um, he'll, uh, he'll work you in that deal. I know he did it at Russellville. Uh, Kim Hood, who's our gifted teacher, she wanted to get some robots for her class, and she had a little grant. And she called him, and she got she got three of them, and one of them was open. And she said, "I don't know if anything's wrong with it." I said, "Well, I don't know. Call Dan." So she called Dan, and Dan said it was open. She said, "Yeah, it looks like some stuff that moved around." He said, "I'll send you another one." She said, "Okay, well, send me a thing so I can send this back." He said, "Ah, never mind. Don't worry about it." So okay, well, cool. Yeah. So he was. I mean, yeah. Does guy. he do SolidWorks too? Dan is the no. Dan is the Vex representative oh, okay. for Alabama, although he's in. Indiana, Illinois, where some starts with I, and I don't know where he is. Um, because that SolidWorks is very expensive. Easy C is like less than 100 bucks, but SolidWorks is 500. Yeah, SolidWorks, you can get a, um, Trial. Get a student version of it. Right. And we. We've I got the student license right now because he's been coming to the classes, but right. it, it expires May 31st. Right. And then it'll start again. We'll, we'll get a new number on kickoff day. Yeah. And then it expires again December yeah. 31st. When we're not on so. camera, I'll talk to you more about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Google Docs is a, is a I thought, a really, really important tool. Mm -hmm. um, you got WordPress, you got spreadsheets. My uh, Google Forms is how I do my applications for the team. Uh, everybody who gets hired onto the team goes to, we have a thing on our website, as soon as uh, we hire people, we send them an invitation, it's not really hiring. You're invited to be on the team now. And you, uh, they have a piece of paper, they have to sign it, but they also, to, I guess, solidify the fact they want to be on the team, to go to the website and they fill out the demographic information. 
And all that goes into, through Google Forms, goes into a spreadsheet. And since it's in a spreadsheet, you can then take it off real easy to do all your demographic stuff you gotta have. I, mean, you, I just went through the demographic form, and I have a block for that. And so now, I've got all kinds of stuff. I can set it up. We do charts and graphs, and all that goes into their presentation. They put, you know, how many boys, girls, how many middle school, high school, and they have, you know, pie charts and everything. So and the demographics for the new ones, it has to go in your notebook. Yeah. Very important. If it's not in there, um, you don't, pretty much don't have notebook. Okay, important stuff, because I'm about, we're about done. If you don't know something, ask somebody. Okay. You can ask somebody nearby. If you don't have anybody nearby, I know Elaine will help you, and I know my Excellent. team will help you. You'll get email at the beginning of the season from just about every team saying, hey, if you need any help, call us, because you get points for that. You but, also will get contact information. But also because we really do want to help. So, um, You'll also get contact information, so oh, yeah, you, you know email. all the schools, all the primary teachers, email, phone number, all that kind of stuff. But if you need help, ask them. I know that over the past two or three years, we've had people say, we can't get our robot program. So they would bring it up and Bernie would program it for them. Um, we've, we've done all kinds of stuff like that. We've had people come Don't up. be embarrassed. Just no, we've had, we, were, we had a field the first year. I, I don't know if you know the relationship between Muscle Shoals and Russellville, but there is a relationship there. It's not pretty. Um, <laughs> we had, we built a, had a field built, and we were the only team that had one, I think, at the time. And so we sent out a message, anybody who wants to use our field, come on. Who was the only one to come? Muscle Shoals. And so people looked at us funny, but we said well, it's okay. I want to say, too, the, when the kids, when they get asked to come help, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. They just feel yes. like yes. They feel I like am, you know, ten foot at tall. Mall Day, yeah. we helped. We were able to stay at Mall Day for a long time and were able to help. If most yeah. of need some help programming. And our kids programmed it, you know, just like in a few huh. minutes on the, and then the Muscle Shoals student said, oh, this is the first time we've seen it move. Oh, they yeah. built it and you never seen it move. And right. just that camaraderie and that, then they see each other at the game day or the whatever, and it's building mm -hmm. those it's building relationships. Building relationships, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a competition without being super competitive, mm -hmm. right? I, I like that part. I mean, it's, I try to do the same thing when I coach softball too. I mean, if we had we show up at a field and our somebody comes to our field and oh our catcher forgot their stuff, well you could say too bad I guess you can't play, <laughs> or you can say hey we've got some in our equipment room here try it on see if it works go Just ahead the then we can play you know yeah. and there's no sense in I mean we're not going to loan you our catcher but we can <laughs> catch your equipment. Okay. Um, have yourself a rules monitor. I think you talked about that. I took my most OCD kid I had, yeah. and that was our rules yeah. monitor. <laughs> and he would read them every single day. And they love it. They love it. He would pick them off of his hands and say, that's the way to do that. So, um, check the Q&A. That rules monitor needs to do that. Give them the oh, password. Say to, go ahead. Um, okay, so at South Bass this past year, something happened. And um, we were told we were penalized because we were told we couldn't do something, whatever it was. Well, we knew we knew we could. We knew we could because we had read the rules and we had that OCD kid who was completely in charge of reading the Q and A. And we knew that we were right. We knew we were right. And um, but we took the penalty. Okay, we took the penalty. I mean, because you can't. I mean, that's what you got to do. You just took the penalty and kept on moving on. Well, after it was all said and done. We didn't drop it, but we handled it nicely mm -hmm. and just, you know, we didn't get to play this round and, you know, we were penalized for this, but we were called, you tell us what rule we broke, mm -hmm. you know, because you have, I think you have a, a contact person or yeah. something mm -hmm. that they can send over there and all that. So they handled it very professionally. I didn't even get involved. Well, I don't mm -hmm. think I could have because at South Best you can go into the pit, but I didn't get involved. The kids handled it. When it was all said and done, we had somebody come to us, one of the referees, and say, we were wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? So be aware that the people that help, even at Northwest Shoals, you know, they get trained, but they're, sometimes things happen. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's okay. You know, it's you okay. just got to have that open communication and, and be, and so, something happened to us, um, it seemed like something else happened to us at South Coast, I can't remember. 
But uh, when it was all said and done, we still were successful. Mm -hmm. So it's not worth losing your cool over. Um, just let the kids try to figure it out, and they're going to learn from it. But um, the kid and that's actually another lesson them. for them to learn that you know life's not always fair. Right. We don't always, mm -hmm. you know, even when we play by the rules. Things right. don't always come out. That's right. But it said a lot to that child that that referee had come up to yes. him and said, like, yes. I was wrong and I'm so sorry. I mean, it almost kept us out of, we were in the final, um, was it 10? Is that right? 10? Uh, eight, Semi no, eight. eight. We were in the final eight. We almost made it to the final four. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we made it to the final eight and it happened, I think, the round before that or something. I mean, it was, it was scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was really scary. But, um, we went back home and we talked about it and like I said, that adult coming to a 15 year old child and saying, I messed up, I'm sorry, you know, meant life lessons there, so. Yeah. The, um, just make sure y'all have fun yes. with it. That's a big thing. One one other thing I would say and then I forgot what it was. Okay. What was I going to say? We were talking about Q&A and stuff like that. Q&A and stuff like that. Uh, Things happen. Things do happen. Learn from it. You don't remember. Learn from it. I don't remember anyway. Okay. Keep your cool. It's not a big deal. Um, so, any questions? I'll probably think when I'll go, oh! And so, Email. that'll be it. So, um, anyway, y'all have any questions? As a teacher, keep yourself a notebook. Um, and this isn't anything fancy, but if you want to look at the cam, but um, I just have my quick two things like uh, that I need to get to quickly. Um, tentative schedule, and of course, this is last year stuff. And then I've got my uh, Q&A information, the password in case we missed it. Of course, this is last year, so just a notebook paper for me to jot stuff down. But again, um, let's see. Tasks, you'll get something like this at kickoff, or it may no, it's in the it's in the papers I gave you. This their suggestion oh. as oh, to when things do I? I don't remember what it was. Yeah. That. Oh, good. Keep it in mind. When certain things can get done or should get done, but don't get so consumed with this that it, it messes you up if you're not where they say. Because my first year, we were nowhere near this. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just mainly rules, but it's mine. It's the one that um, I have in case I need it. Guidelines for engineering, notebook are in here, stuff like that. Awarding, awards, I mean, so. We keep the rules every year. We have a big best book. Yeah. Big, huge binders. We just put the rules in for every year. Because okay. at some point in time, something's going to something's going to come back. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say, I see this. Okay, this started with me back when I was coaching softball. I had a seventh grade team and eighth grade team, and the the eighth grade team played first in the seventh grade team. Okay, so the eighth grade team before I took over. Here's the the precedent for this. The eighth grade team would play, and they go home. And the seventh graders play and then there's nobody left there to yell for them or something mm -hmm. except for you know two mamas and a couple people. So and when I took over I started this for this as a precedent that no you can't go home whether we're on the road or we're at home you stay because the seventh graders stood in the stands and they cheered for you and now you sit in the stands and you cheer for them. That's just the way it is. Okay. Now for my, my best team same exact thing we stay in the stands. Whether we came in first place or last place, we stay. South's best, we didn't win a darn thing. Uh, except for me. Anyway, <laughs> we, we didn't win we a came thing. We 52nd in Red Lock out of 54. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you did better than two people. Oh, there you go. So, so but we stay and we clap for everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it, to me, means a lot to the other teams that you stay. We stay to, to cheer on. Mm -hmm. Brooks, we stayed, even if, even if Brooks hadn't been there, if it had been nobody from our hub had been there left, we stayed and would cheer for everybody. Mm -hmm. Just because that's the right thing to do. So if you, I know it, I know it in our competition, too, it's I see people, if they if they don't make it into the semifinals, they just pack up and go. Mm -hmm. There's nobody left. And that, that to me, that bothers me. So I make my, and I have some parents that why can't we go? Because we're going to stay. That's why we're going to go. <laughs> I'm in charge, and I say, they can't do yet. How about that? We'll stay an hour later. If I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> um, so, that's it. Any and I will say, that's, it's oh. genuine. I mean, 
those kids cheering for those other teams, they really are excited. It's, it's genuine. And I know at first, especially if you're used to football and baseball and basketball and volleyball and all that, and you get there and you go, oh my gosh, they're cheering for me. Yeah. This is weird. But the kids really enjoy that. And they get excited in that competition. Just robot competition is amazing anyway. So. I, I noticed with our kids, um, you know, they work so hard on that robot and it's supposed to do that particular task. And, and ours just couldn't quite do task B the way yeah. we wanted it to do. But the, that school, their robot has got that down. I mean, right. and, and so they were genuinely impressed by that. And, you know, because that was something we really worked on and couldn't hit it. Um, but they got it. And, and so they... They really did cheer yes. for them, and yes. uh, oh, yeah. because they were impressed by what those, those other students had done. Oh, they came to me. Hey, did you see that profile? You know, there yeah. was one down at South Best. Huh? We've got a picture had, of all the markets. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, the thing you had to pick up all the let's see, what Crickets. something. Anyway, they had a thing on the back of their mm -hmm. robot that yeah. would spin around, pick up the piece spin around and pick the next one up and it made a little round thing. Then they went across and it just slide right into where it's supposed to say, oh my yeah. lord, yeah. <laughs> what did you think of that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to say too, to, the, to, I know you've been involved before too, but to anybody new, everybody needs to understand every single year is different. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was telling our kids today. The first year that we, that my husband and I coached it, um, we had 20, ki 20 22 kids. And then the, the second year that we coached it, we had 29, and like 20 of them were new. Brand new, had yeah. never even done it, anything like this ever before, had right. moved to this area, and it was just brand new. But the year before, you know, we did really, really well, and we did third, we made third at Northwest Shoals in the robot. Mm -hmm. Well, this year, we didn't. So, I mean, I've really tried to tell them this year, because the team that's there right now, that's here yeah. today, train, they just went to Auburn, their first experience. Right. Okay, <laughs> and I'm going, okay, might not be like that again. Right. Every right. task is different. Just trying to prepare them to say every task is different. Every year is different. Yep. So it's, it's you know, it's just like any sport. Every year is going to be different. So. Yeah. Have well, you looked at the game? Oh, no, we can't. They have your they thoughts. No, it. well, I mean, oh. just what they, well, I, the I mean. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really mad him since you're kind of out of it. Yeah, close the door. I'll tell you something. So no, 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 <laughs> no, my question is just, do you, oh, okay. what are your thoughts about the payer? I don't, I mean, I don't mean the teaser. The the teaser. Yes, oh, yes. I've have you looked at the methodology things? And, okay, so no. you haven't looked at. That. I haven't looked at. Okay. I mean, I sent that information. Do your but, do y'all do? I sent it to him. I don't know if they are not. It does change every year, but also keep in mind, because I had some kids say, oh, they're going to make us dig in dirt. Well, no, they're not. I can tell you that, number one. They don't want dirt in the gym. So you have to think about, okay, what sort of things are always going to be there? There will be, they might use little racquetballs, tennis balls. Those things might be there. PVC pipe, two by fours, one by fours, um, and a field that's only this big, okay? And probably, I don't know if you'll get to interact with other robots or not. The first year we competed, you could interact with other robots. Since then, you haven't been able to so much. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's all kinds and two of things years, that happen. My first two, you didn't two have years, you could, on yeah, and you couldn't yeah. even mm -hmm. you couldn't even cooperate. I mean, it was right. you solo, mm -hmm. whatever your right. robot could or could do, and then. This last is the first year the wheels for us. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Sure. That's yeah. 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 So last year the wheels didn't fall. This year the wheels fall. <laughs> but, but they've got, they figured out how to fix that now. They, they learned to machine some things better. They took the, the, the CNC machine. When we, were at, when we were here, the wheels fell off because all they did was they, they took that metal block. I'm sure everybody does the same thing. You take the aluminum block, you cut out a square, you cut a hole through the middle, you cut a hole down, tap the hole, you run your wheel in there and you screw it down. Okay. And with South's best, what they do? Well, that, the problem is, there's some wiggle in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. They took the CNC machine and they cut out the square. Okay. Then they took and cut out the D shape that was the exact size of the one on the motor, but just about a, a hundredth of an inch bigger than the one on the motor. Then they drilled down through there and tapped it and screwed it on there and 